When I decided that I wanted to check out this idea of riding scooters, I didn't even understand that they were motorcycles. That said, as soon as I decided that I might actually go buy one, it seemed like the cheapest way to find out if I wanted to buy one since the course is much cheaper than actually throwing money away on a scooter that I wouldn't ride. And then let's layer in the fact that if I wanted to ride, the state that I live in requires a course in order to get the motorcycle endorsement. So it just seemed like a no brainer. And then I get to the course and I start chatting with other people in the class and I was one of the only newbies in the class. Uh, a lot of other people had been riding for some period of time and they were just working to get legal for whatever reason. But even if your state doesn't require it, I hands down recommend it. So my husband actually has a motorcycle endorsement but got it back when you didn't have to take that course. And I asked him a couple of questions just randomly from the book that I have just to see if he remembered or just kind of knew this stuff already from having ridden for so long and he didn't. I'm gonna share those questions with you at the end and if you can't get them, then I'm going to recommend highly that you go take the Motorcycle Safety Foundation's basic rider course for to keep you safe. Is the motorcycle class worth it? Yes. I understand that the course can be quite expensive. And like I said already, I still believe it's cheaper than throwing away your money on something that you might not actually ride and enjoy. And getting comfortable on this thing in controlled environment is definitely a way to get comfortable so that you can enjoy it. There are some stats that actually show that just having some sort of a safety course makes you a better driver in general. And the same applies for motorcycle safety. It is a little bit different. So even if you've been driving a car, you'll want to take the course. Can you take the course online? Yes and no. As part of the course, you actually have to take a very small, well, three hours, I guess, isn't small, but a three hour portion of it is online. You cannot do the fancy fast forwarding and things like that. They make you sit there for the three hours. You can break it up into chunks, but that portion is online. And then you'll go into class and then they'll teach you a bit more in the book way. And then you'll go out into a parking lot like where we're at right now and start practicing on a motorcycle or scooter. I actually found a place on the other side of town that had scooters for me to use and I was super happy about that. But generally the places that you go to will have motorcycles, but call and see if they have a scooter if that's your jam. Is the basic rider course hard? No, it's not. I was actually so surprised. I had so many nerves thinking about the class in advance and then showing up for the class. It was intense. You have to be there on time. I had never ridden a motorcycle before, so showing up to do this in a group setting just seemed insane to me. However, what you can expect whenever you get there is that they're actually going to start you from like literally from scratch. You're literally going to get on a motorcycle and turn it on and then turn it off and then turn it on and then turn it off. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating at all. That was definitely my experience. And then after they feel like you have mastered that skill, you start power walking it. So then your motorcycle is on and then you're like walking it with the throttle, barely kind of nudging you along, uh, walking across the parking lot and then you walk it back. <laughs> So when I say that they, this course is for beginners, it truly is for beginners. And let me even take that a step back. The online component that you take before you go is all about the components of the motorcycle. So they show you, you know, where the brakes are and how to turn them on and things like that. So that way you're not totally unaware whenever you walk in. So you literally need no experience when you walk in and while I don't have a ton of experience with multiple classes, I know the class of about 20 that I was in, we all passed. So no, the motorcycle safety course is not hard. So I'm actually wearing what I wore the day that I went to my first class. So I've got some cowboy boots on <laughs> because it's what I have. You have to cover your ankles. I've got standard blue jeans on. Um, I took my course in June in Texas. So it was freaking hot and it's hot today, um, but I'm geared up. I did not have a helmet whenever I went, but I borrowed one of those awesome community helmets. So if you have one, bring one. Um, but they do have that for you if you don't have one. And some sort of sunglasses or um, some sort of safety glasses, eye coverage. I had some clear safety glasses that I had that day. And then literally random gloves. My husband is a mechanic and sometimes he'll bring home some random gloves from work and they're all stained up and nasty. Um, they're washed, but they're stained. 
and that's all you need. So even though it's not full safety gear that you would expect to see for the motorcycle and what you'll learn about inside of the course, um, you do have to have that exposed skin covered even for the parking lot exercises. And also, I had a blue jean jacket. I'm not wearing that today because <laughs> we're sitting here in the parking lot and I'm not actively working with the scooter. So anyway, they teach you about the full on gear, but the whole idea is that all of your exposed skin is covered before you start interacting with the skills portion of the class. So it's, you don't have to bring a lot. So I randomly went through the book, decided on a few questions, and I'm gonna ask them here. If you get them all right, I wanna hear about it inside of the comments because I'll be totally impressed. It was actually a nice refresher for me to actually decide on some questions here. We all have room for improvement. But I'm curious how many you get right or you get wrong. Question number one, whenever you're riding, of course, if it's a you know, two lane, one each way, you kind of get where you need to ride and then you have multiple lanes. And if you've been driving a car, you kind of understand uh, where to fall and to line with that. But did you know that there are multiple lane positions and that is where you place your motorcycle or scooter within the single lane that you're riding in? How many are there? One, two, or three. If you guess three, you're right. So you have the left portion, a center portion, and a right portion. And there's times for you to be in each of those, depending on the scenario that you're riding in. So I hope you got that one right. Because if you're riding, you should be using all three. All right, when you're cruising down the road, you're always scanning. You're looking out on the horizon, seeing what's coming, who's in the lane next to you. Uh, are there children about to run in the street? There's all sorts of stuff that you're looking out for whenever you're driving or riding. How many escape paths are recommended at all times? One, two, or three? More than one. Road situations, they change all the time, but the more you practice this, the better that you'll get whenever it's time to actually employ some of these things. So gen two, Two or more is going to keep you in the sweet spot and keep you safe. Um, but start practicing and just kind of thinking through what you would do in different scenarios as you're driving. It'll help you make sure that you're scanning appropriately as you're doing it. So what's wrong with what you see right now? I am not riding the scooter, so you can ignore my gear. But what is wrong with this picture right here? The helmet being on the seat. They can actually fall from that place and damage if they do, and you won't even be able to tell that it happened. So do not store your helmet on top of your scooter, motorcycle, or any other surface that it has a risk of falling, or else it won't protect you the way it needs to. Can you name four of the six different impairments that riders might have? And I'll kind of start with obvious to less obvious. Alcohol and drugs are one and two. Then we have distraction, fatigue, your emotions, and aging. So did you get four out of six of those things? I figure the drug and alcohol is probably pretty obvious, but just things like being emotional. If you're riding with a chip on your shoulder, you're more likely to be more aggressive and you're not gonna keep your head on straight whenever you're put into situations that require you to be on your A game. So I hope these weren't ridiculously hard, but just kind of get you thinking about the different about whether you need to take this motorcycle safety course. I understand that lots of folks ride without, you know, the endorsement or even needing it, but it was a great w introduction for me to get on a scooter. So I've actually got the book here from the course and they have some scenarios at the back that are meant to be like thought provoking or whatever. And it's really to make you think through what caused a crash. So comment below if you have any thoughts on it, but uh, let's run into this one. So the rider was traveling in the country over hilly terrain that included some sharp curves. Traveling in a leisurely fashion, the rider was enjoying the beautiful scenery while passing the overlooks along a highway. A camper ahead slowed to turn into a parking area, but the rider saw it too late. Using no front brake, the rider overbraked the rear wheel, which caused a skid, and they ended up slamming into the rear of the camper. An investigation revealed that the camper's brake lights were not functioning and that no turn signal was used. What was the cause of this crash? So comment below with your thoughts on what caused the crash and watch this next video to continue some motorcycle safety talk.